So you mentioned a couple of those guys. Um, there's some loaded parts of this offense for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Who are you, in addition to Stroud, who are some of the guys you're anxious to see and, and get a look at a, a year bigger, a year stronger, and a year older? Yeah, obviously, Jackson Smith and Jigba might be one of the best receivers in the country. Jordan Addison might have something to say about that, but is he going to continue more of what he did last year where he basically had a record-breaking season even though he was the third option in that wide receiver room? What happens now that he's option number one? But the guy I really have my eye on, anybody who listens to our podcast, Buckeye Talk knows this at this point, is Marvin Harrison Jr. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because he's the son of former Hall of Fame wide receiver from the Indianapolis, Indianapolis Colts, Marvin Harrison Jr. Except he's four inches taller than his dad. He's 15 pounds heavier than his dad, and he's a lot better of an athlete than his dad ever was. And so when you combine that with the Hall of Fame pedigree and the way some of these guys in the program have talked about his work ethic, could we see a similar thing that we've seen in the past with guys like Jamar Chase and Jack Smith and Jigba when they go from basically doing absolutely nothing as true freshmen to sophomore year, they have these record-breaking years. Could he be on route for that? So I'd keep my eye out for him. Uh, what about the running back position with Travion Henderson? Are you expecting um, him to build on what was a pretty good <laughs> rookie season? <laughs> yeah, it was okay. He was just all right there. I, I think – I think what's interesting is he did what he did last year. What we have to remember is he hadn't played football in two years because he's from Virginia who moved their 2020 season, which would have been his senior year of high school, to the spring, and he just decided to early enroll. So he hadn't played football in two years. So he just physically really wasn't ready to play college football, and yet he was so talented that it didn't matter that he went on to break Maurice Carrette's record for most touchdowns by a true freshman. So, yeah, I think – it's, it's weird because Ohio State's such an elite passing offense. They have such elite wide receivers and such elite quarterbacks that Travion Henderson can just kind of be an afterthought. And he might have another elite record-breaking type of a year, but you it just won't be the front of your mind because of everything that's going on through the air in Ohio State. But, yeah, continue to see him grow. But I think his big you know, Heisman Trophy statement year is going to be in 2023 when he's the focal point of this offense. Uh, are there any question marks on the offensive side of the football? Are, are, is there any reason for concern? I mean, they don't throw the ball to the tight end, so it's like any concern you would have there kind of gets null and void because all they do is block. I think the only problem that could come up for this offense is on the offensive line if those tackles, Dewan Jones and Paris Johnson, get hurt. This might be one of the best offensive lines in the country, the starting five at least, but – they don't necessarily have the same depth they had last year when they were starting four tackles, along with having the benefit of Matthew Jones as a sixth guy who was rotating in. This year, the top guys are really good, and there's a lot of question marks about, okay, what if Paris Johnson gets nicked up in the game and has to come out? What if Dewan Jones gets nicked up and has to come out? So, But unless – but you can't – I mean, this is football. Guys are going to get hurt, so you can't sit here and have a conversation about that. So as long as nobody has any severe injuries – I see no reason why this isn't the nation's best offense. 